Hello everyone, it's Killer Shrew Fan here, and we have got another review for you today. Now, I know we started off by saying that we were going to take a look at kind of the smaller, less interesting dinosaur, well, not less interesting, but y you know what I'm saying, the smaller range of dinosaur toys that Mattel had to offer us for the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom toy line, but... <laughs> Okay, we're just at a point where we can't wait any longer. We want to open up one of the more exciting ones. And can you blame us? I mean, their line is just so incredible this year. It has been so hard restraining ourselves and not allowing ourselves to open up the um, actual um, good, interesting stuff. So today's review is going to be of this guy the Metriocanthosaurus model, and this was actually one of the ones that we were most excited for, at least from the Growler range. I don't know what it is, but there's something about this model that just got me so incredibly stoked. So we are going to take a closer look at this packaging here, and then we are going to cut this dinosaur out and give you guys a better look. So without further ado, let's do this. So, if we start off in the top left corner of the package here, you have got the Jurassic World logo. No Fallen Kingdom, but it is all cracked up to show that the park is gone and the kingdom has fallen. If we move down the side, you've got these sort of bars, like the cage, and then at the bottom of the box, you can see Owen and Blue, the stars of the film. If we move along the bottom there, you can see the three plus years warning, which I qualify for, and the Metriacanthosaurus uh, logo. Uh, this is, of course, part of the Rorivore line of dinosaur toys. And if we move even further, all the way to the bottom right corner, you can see a diagram showing the action motion of this dinosaur toy. If we move up the right side of the box, you can see the forest of Isla Nublar uh, silhouetted against the orange volcanic sky. And I gotta say, this packaging with this sort of silhouetted forest and the orange sunsetty sky really harkens back to the original Kenner packaging, and I think that is just so cool. If we move up to the top of the box, you can see that we have got the um, sort of button that indicates that this is a roaring dinosaur toy. And if we move across the uh, top there, you can get a better look at Mount Saibo erupting. You know, this the same sort of stuff that we've seen on all the other packaging. And it is just a beautiful, beautiful packaging art that they did here. You can see a little um, icon indicating where the button is for the gimmick, and then we come back to the logo. The back of the box features a diorama of the Metriacanthosaurus itself, um, along with instructions and um, pertinence and all of that jazz, you know, kind of the typical stuff that we have seen um, on the other packaging. Um, and at the top right corner, I believe, you get the Jurassic World Facts app reminder. And if we move down, you can see the Roaring logo once again, and push button for sound and chomping action. And there you can see the action that you can expect. Made in China, down on the bottom you can see all the pertinence. Uh, no one over under three years old, small parts, yada yada yada, boring, boring, boring. And here you can see the other um, Rorivores in the Wave 1 lineup, the Triceratops, Baryonyx, and Allosaurus. If we move up from that, you can see that the batteries are included in this um, model, so you don't have to worry about buying those along with it. And at the top, you can see the Jurassic World logo once again, Metriacanthosaurus push button action, and there you can see the beautiful rendition of the dinosaur itself. But without further ado, I think it's time we got this thing out of the packaging.
Yes, the collector in me has a hard time doing that, but here is the Metriacanthosaurus, and as you can see, she is having a hard time standing up. And that's because she's missing something important, so we're gonna give her a hand here and pop that tail into place. All you gotta do is just kinda push it in. You gotta use a little force, and there we go. It is in, and let's see if she can stand a little easier now. Wow. Wow. There she is. What a beautiful model. And wow, I just, I love that. Well, okay. Well, we might have an issue here. I'm sure it's just because of the uneven surface of our review space that she's having a hard time standing. Maybe if I adjust the legs here or something. There we go. I knew we would get her. Oh, it's so cool. <laughs> I just love how this model looks, and we are so excited to give you guys a closer look at it. And as always, we're going to start off with the head. So starting off with the head there, you can see that the mouth uh, closes up nice and easy and fits nice and tightly into the upper jaw. But you can still see all of the individually sculpted teeth peeking through the lips there. You can also see the subtle texturing that Mattel has covered the entire surface area with. And you have got an orange eye staring out from a nicely carved out crevice. The eye looks so incredibly lifelike. There you can see the open jaw and get a look at the individually sculpted and painted teeth. Now I feel I should say that there is something about this dinosaur's open mouth that bothers me. Just the angularity of the lower jaw feels very off to me, like it's broken. I mean, when it's closed up, it's fine. It doesn't, it doesn't, it looks very natural, but just that angle of the open mouth looks like the jaw has been broken and it's just kind of dangling there. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but it's one of the things that kind of bugs me about this model. Um, but anywho, if we open the mouth for you, you can see, get a look at the sculpted palate and the back of the throat, which has been carved out incredibly deep. The plastic in the back has also been painted um, and it has a nice gloss to it to give it a nice wet look, which I think is just awesome. And there you can see it with the closed mouth once again. If we move down the back of the model, as you can see, you have got wrinkles and skin textures, um, along with pebbled scaling. The texturing on this model is like amazing for a mass produced uh, toy. Um, it's like collect a, or maybe even Safari limited level detailing, which I think is just incredible. I love the, the ridge scaling on the back, the larger scales that just kind of overlap each other and the pebbled scaling that goes all the way down to the tip of the tail is just beautiful stuff. It really is. Mattel did not have to go this hard for us, but they did. And as you can see, the texturing continues all the way down to the end of that tail. If we take a look at the feet here, something that does bother me about this model is those toe claws. I mean, look at the curvature of that. That just looks completely unnatural, like the claws you would dra draw in like third grade or something. I don't know, I wish they just kinda, you know, slope down rather than curling. That just doesn't read right to me. But you can see you have got some lovely plate scaling across the top of the toes, and if we move up the back of the ankles, you've got some lovely anatomy and musculature in the calf, and the thigh looks incredibly powerful here. I mean, just wow. Wow. That is a toned leg right there. Man, I need to get this dinosaur's, uh, this dinosaur's musculature on me. <laughs> I'm jealous. I never thought I'd be jealous of a dinosaur's anat anatomy, but here I am. Look at that. Wow, that is impressive stuff. There in the midsection, you can also see you can get a sort of glimpse at the scapula and rib cage. And if we take a look at these forearms here, as you can see, the finger claws are not painted. I do wish they had gone the extra mile and painted those. I don't think it would have been much uh, harder to do that, but you have got some lovely sculpted musculature in the biceps and forearm there. If we go down the back, you can get a better look at those pebbled scales and the plate scales that I was just talking about earlier. You have got a seam line, but it is hardly noticeable from a distance. There you can see the button uh, has been blended very nicely into the rest of the dinosaur. It does not stand out all that well, which I think is awesome. They hit it very well. And then the scaling, of course, continues all the way down to the tip of the tail, as we discussed earlier. Now, this Metriacanthosaurus, like most Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom toys, does have a wide variety of articulation. You can move the legs forward 
and backwards, and they, you can, may, no, mm, I don't know, yeah, you might be able to go 360, I don't know why you would, but they kind of have snap-in points, you know, you see that there, they just kind of snap into place, and they can be moved um, outwards as well, and the forearms feature a wide variety of articulation given that they are on a ball and socket joint, just like our shoulders, so you can move them out, down, in, and around, everywhere, any which way, they kind of have a carved out space that only allows you to move um, certain ways and for some reason the l uh, right arm on mine is pretty loose but you have got that same articulation uh, maybe it's just mine that has that uh, loose thing and there you got the jaw articulation for the uh, sound gimmick which I I think is pretty cool and the tail does not move you can kind of get it to twitch a little but really it's mostly just locked in place so that's really all there is to the motion of this dinosaur you can stand her up or you can make her more parallel to the ground, um, but yeah, I, I love the hunched back shape that she's got going on when you stand her parallel. It's incredibly feline-esque and very predatory. I don't know what it is, but there's something about this pose that I just think is so incredibly cool and predatory in nature, and that's really why I was pretty excited to have this model come on if you stand. And if you stand her back on her hind, on her tail, she really has this sort of classic dinosaur vibe to her with the tail dragging kangaroo stance. And as far as the paint job goes, I know a lot of people were concerned when this um, Im dinosaur image is first leaked back in December. They were like, wow, that is a vibrant dinosaur color. But by the time we actually got it, the colors are much more muted. They were like a crayon yellow back then. Now they're like a mustard yellow with a forest green striping on the back. The paint does not go all the way down the tail. One of my nitpicks on all of Mattel's models. But yes, it reminds me of the classic Ray Harryhausen dinosaurs. If we move along the bottom, you can see you've got the uh, speaker area. Um, kind of this rotted, leprosy, honeycomby look down there. Yeah, you know, if you have like uh, tyrophobia or whatever that fear is called, that might, oy, that 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 might be a little off-putting. <laughs> Makes me nervous just looking at it. But anywho, if we move along the bottom. Uh, when we get to the bottom of the feet here, you can see you have got the Jurassic World emblem carved into the foot. Um, they moved the logo from the side of the thigh down to the bottom of the foot. And the other foot here features the Jurassic World uh, scan for the uh, Fax app. And if you um, are not planning on buying this dinosaur but want to um, put this in your phone, feel free to use mine. All right, now is as good a time as any to show you the action gimmicks. So you got the button up here that we talked about, nice and hidden. Uh, so uh, Metriacanthosaurus, have you got any words for our viewers today? Uh-huh, uh-huh, interesting. More on that? I see, I see, and how do you feel about that? Any, any parting words for our viewers, Metriacanthosaurus? Interesting. Very well said. Well, thank you for that. So, yes, we have got about five roars. And the best part about it is no T-Rex roar, which is fantastic. Now, you may be wondering just how big this Metriacanthosaurus is. Well, from the tip of the tail all the way to the front of the snout, you're looking at right around 13 and a half inches which is about 34 centimeters. And from the base all the way to the highest point when you rear her back on her tail, you're looking at just around six inches off the ground, which is about 15 centimeters. So a very good size. For size comparison, we don't have a lot of interesting models. Obviously, this is the first Metriacanthosaurus that we've ever gotten in a Jurassic uh, toy line, and we haven't reviewed many other figures. So we're just gonna go ahead and bring in the recently reviewed Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom Carnotaurus toy by Mattel. And of course, he's not gonna stand for us either. Come on, you. Oh, oh no, oh no, now she's going. Ah, oh, you guys are bad influences on each other. There, help each other out. Maybe. Oh, come on. Can you guys, okay, just maintain. We're almost done. There, help each other out. We'll be good. So as you can see, the Carnotaurus comes up a little higher than the Metriacanthosaurus. And in terms of length, they are about the same, actually. The cool thing about Mattel's toy line is all of the dinosaurs are in scale with each other and the humans. So this is what we can expect in the upcoming film. Well, everyone, that is going to do it for our look at Mattel's Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, Rorivore, Metriacanthosaurus, and overall, this is a great addition to the toy line and the Jurassic Park slash world um, toy line in 
general. Uh, it's great to see such a unique species done for um, a big mainstream film. You know, I didn't even know about Metriacanthosaurus until this film, so the fact that they've immortalized it in toy form, I think, is really doing this dinosaur uh, a, a good deed. Um, I, obviously, I can't do the whole which who did it better, Kenner or Mattel, because Kenner never did something like this, so I'll just give an overall rating, and for that, I'm gonna do an 8 out of 10. Sure, it has its faults, but I still love it. The sculpture is great, the paint job is pretty good, and I like the fact that all of the roars are unique to the species. As always, I would love to know what you guys think of this model. Uh, do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you own it yet? Are you gonna get it? Which of the Aurora Vores are you most looking forward to from Wave 1? Let me know all of your thoughts on it down in the comments section below. As always, I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in to this video. If you enjoyed our review today, don't be afraid to let us know by hitting that like button. And also, don't be afraid to subscribe on the way out. We got a lot more Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom reviews on the way. Thanks so much again for tuning in, and that's gonna do it for us. Killer Shrew fan, out.